In this video, we're going to review a few basic and slightly above basic uh, pandas concepts. We're going to talk about processing dates and years, cleaning financial data, mostly by removing dollar signs and converting to numbers, calculating new columns based on existing columns, and filtering and counting results. So we're going to be using a real life data set about lumber prices because I've spent far too much money on lumber in the past six months. So let's get started. Uh, if we were just reading in this data set, we would import pandas as pd and then df equals pd.readcsv lumberprices.csv.head. And there we go. We have our, our data right here. Now, if we get into a situation where we have a lot of columns or we have very large columns, I just like to always throw two pandas options in here. Um, this one will make it so we always have an infinite number of columns displayed. This one will add commas to really big numbers. Not that we need any in this data set, but I just find it useful. So let's get started. What is the earliest month in this data set? Or what is the earliest date in this data set? So if I just look at my data frame, I have a column here called date. And the date here is formatted as year and then month and then day and then the time of day, it's, it's always zero. So honestly, I could just sort values and sort by date and then it would say, here's your first date, um, December 9th in 1996. It doesn't matter whether this is a string or a date time because regardless, because it is basically in alphabetical order, 1996 will be before 1997. The month 01 will be for the, before the month 02. I can just sort by the date and everything will be fine. Another way I could do this is by saying df.date.min and it will give me the smallest value inside of the date column. I usually prefer to do sort values myself, maybe sort values head three, something like that, just to look at the data and make sure that everything is fine. Because um, maybe there's some sort of sorting weirdness or, you know, they're putting ones before uh, nines or blah, 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 anything crazy. So it's just good to have a little bit of context by doing head instead of just blindly grabbing that minimum there. All right, what three months had the highest lumber price? Now, if you aren't thinking, you might just sort by high values here, right? And it says, oh, look at this high value, this high value 1,000. And you're like, yeah, 1,000 is definitely bigger than 800. But then you say, wait, 800 is not bigger than, than 900. And you say, well, wait, maybe we need ascending equals false here. And you're like, okay, 934, definitely bigger than 912, definitely bigger than 900. But then oddly down here, we have like 1,500 and 1,000. And what's, what's going on with this order? This order is not working. What's happening is when we look at, let's say, the, the data types of each one of these columns, they're objects, which really means they're strings. And the thing that we're seeing here is alphabetical order. Because they are strings, they are not being treated as numbers. This is not being treated as the number 934.5. It's being treated as the same thing as like spelling cat and dog. And as a result, nine is a bigger, uh, is, is comes earlier in the alphabet, is a bigger number uh, than one. So it's going nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then, then there's no zero. So in order to fix this up, we need to turn these into actual numbers. So if I say df.high, an easy way to turn this into a number, which is not gonna work, um, because there is a decimal in here, we don't want to turn it into an integer. We want to turn it into a float. If we try to turn it into a float, it's going to start screaming. And it's going to say, I don't know what to do here. I can't convert the string to a float. I'm so confused. This is crazy. The reason why this is crazy, the reason why it doesn't understand is because of this dollar sign here. This dollar sign is not a number. So pandas is not sure how we should be converting this into a number. So what I need to do is get rid of that dollar sign. The easy way to do that is to say, hey, 
take that column, let's treat it as a string, and replace every dollar sign with nothing. So when I do dot str replace dollar sign nothing, <clears throat> it now prints out uh, all of these without the dollar sign. Delightful, right? This message here, it's not an error, it's a warning. I'm just going to ignore it because I'm a bad person. So if I want to turn it into a number now, because it actually does look like a number, I just throw dot as type float, and there we go. It is now a float64. Looking good. I can save it back into the column df.high. There we go. df.high is now a float64. If I look at the column, the dollar sign is gone. It's just a beautiful number. I can now sort values by high. Uh, it's putting the smallest at the top, of course. Ascending equals false. And there we go. The highest high is 1711.2. Uh, and that was uh, in May 2021. Uh, while we're here, I'm just going to, oh, what, three months? Yeah, so we got these three months here that have the highest lumber price. So what I'm going to do is just because we want to probably clean all these other ones later, I'm just going to say one, two, three. Let's take our open. Let's replace our open. Let's replace our low. And let's replace our close. We're going to turn all of these into numbers while we're at it because, you know, why not? There we go. They're all numbers. Everything's perfect. What is the median high lumber price in our data set? So if I look at my data frame, I have a column called high. We already worked with it once. I can say, take that column, give me the median. So, you know, 324. Plot the lowest low lumber price on an annual basis. So what I want to do is pretty much group by this year here. So I want all of the you know, 1996s, 1997s, 1998s. What this means is there, there's several different ways of dealing with dates. Um, right now, I have monthly data. Right now, I have monthly data. I want to zoom out to make it annual data instead. Anytime you want to zoom out, this calls for resampling. Resampling is going from, let's say, months to years, um, or you know, minutes to hours, or you know, days to you know, five-year blocks, or, or anything like that. Anytime you're zooming out and making the data not as granular. In order to do that, though, we need to take this date and we need to turn it into a date time. Because if we look at it right now with df.info, it's an object. It's just a string. So if, if we want to turn this into a date time, uh, this looks like a pretty standard format for putting a date in or a date time. Uh, because it has a year, it has a month, it has a day that seems like a standard order. Um, and then it has the time afterwards, but the time is always midnight, so it doesn't really matter to us. Because it is a standard way of representing a date, I can just say, hey pandas, take this column called date and turn it into a date time. It doesn't yell at me, it looks perfect, it turns it into a date time, great. I'm going to save it over top of my original date. I can do a pd.date, because uh, it's not a new column, so that's okay. So I said, hey, take that string version of my column that's a date, turn it into a date time, pd.date time looks at it, it says I pretty much understand that this is a normal format for a date, um, so I'm going to turn it into a date. And we can look to make sure 1996, 1209, 1996, 1209, 1997, 0401, 1997, 0401, we're fine. Everything's perfect. And now what I want to do is plot the lowest low number on an annual basis. So in order to plot the lowest low number, I also need to get the lowest low number, the lowest low lumber price. So if we see this, we see, okay, we have low right here. I could do, you know, low 
dot min. It's going to be my lowest version or my lowest low in the entire data set. What I need is to change this from being on a monthly or daily basis into an annual basis. And like I said before, in order to do that, I need to resample. It's kind of like grouping based on dates. So I want to say, hey, I want to resample on an A basis, on an annual basis. So A is annual, M is monthly, W is weekly, D is daily, and there are a million more. So I'm going to say, hey, resample this into an annual basis, and I would like you to pay attention to the column called date. That is where you are going to find the date time in order to resample. If I run this, it's not going to give me anything interesting, because what I need to say is I need to get the low column, calculate the minimum low for every one of those years. Prints it out, looking nice. After I've printed it, if I throw a dot plot on here, uh, it's going to put this on the x-axis, this on the y-axis, and everything is perfect. Uh, the one problem is that this does not start at zero over here on the y-axis, which might bother me. Um, you can say, oh, hey, let's make the uh, axis go from, let's say, zero to, what, 500 to make it pretty balanced, and that's probably what we're looking to do. Um, yeah, so that's perfect. That's our lowest low. Uh, it doesn't change, you know, an awful much. It does go up a little bit in 2021. Next up, what month in our data set has the largest swing between high and low? So in order to see the difference between high and low, we just subtract them. So I can take my high and I can take my low and I can subtract them. Nothing too crazy there. If I want to save this as a new column, because I want to know what month in the data set has the largest swing, I probably want to put this in a new column. If I want to put this in a new column, I'm going to make a new column called swing. So df swing equals this calculation right here. We take the high, subtract the low. That's the difference. There we go. One thing we have to note here is I did use square brackets and quotation marks here instead of, let's say, the way I did df.date equals the date time version of the date, or the way I did df.open, df.load, df.close to the numeric version of open, low, or close. The reason why is if you need to update an existing column, you can do df.low, df.high. Those were all columns that already existed. But because this is a new column I'm creating, I have to do the square brackets and the quotation marks. And so now, there we go. We got a new column called swing, and I need the month that has the largest swing between high and low. We do not have to resample for this one because this is already monthly data. Even though there is a day associated with the month, uh, if you do this little reading up here, it is based on every single month. So we do not need to resample. I can just say, hey, sort our values by swing. It's going to say, here's the smallest swing. Here's the highest swing. I guess we should ascending equals true and just pull, let's say the first, uh, ascending equals false, sorry. Ascending equals false, so pull the first five. Uh, and there we go. So six hundred and seventy-five dollars uh, a little bit earlier this year. It's the rise in price, which is why I was spending so much money on lumber. Next up, in how many months did lumber prices rise? There, there's there's a few ways to do this. Um, one way to do this is we could say, okay, if the price was greater at the end of the month than the beginning of the month. We'll say that the price rose. So I could say, take the price at the end of the month, the close, and then subtract the open. So in this month, it went up $17. This time it went down $14. This time it went down $25. And I could say, I don't know, 
df dot uh, difference. Sure, we'll call it that. And then I could just count each of them. I could say, let's find everywhere where the difference is greater than zero. Uh, data frame has no attribute. Uh, I don't know how to spell difference. Now I just have this awful extra column, but we'll leave it there because I don't want to show you how to delete columns. So everywhere where difference is greater than zero, I'd say, oh, we can just take a len of that, or we could do a dot shape. Either one of those is fine. Um, so how many times did it rise? Is that what I was looking for? Lumber prices rising, yes. Um, another way of doing this is I could say, let's find all of the places where close, oh God, I could have just done that from the very beginning. So uh, how many of these is close greater than open? <coughs> and then I could just do a len on that. Um, so embarrassing, so embarrassing. Um, but it's fine, it's fine. I could also do a shape, same thing. In 2000, how many months? Oh wait, is this how many years? No, it's how many months. In 2000, how many months saw lumber prices rise versus lumber prices fall? Now this is a time where we can do a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of this filtering. I'll show you a few different ways to do this. So I can say, first look at the data. Give me places that were in the year 2000. Because this is a date time column, I can actually say, hey, give me that column, but only give me the year filter for only places where it is the year 2000. And then I can take this and I can say, you know, year 2000 if I want, save it into another variable. And then I can do the same thing I did up here, but instead of using my full data frame, I'm just using year 2000. So I could say, hey, for year 2000, Find me all of the places where close is greater than open. Find me all the places where open is greater than close. An alternative way to do this is with value counts. So you will use value counts a lot if you're counting, you know, two different categories, but let's make a category called prices rows. And I'm gonna say, Prices rows is when close is greater than open. It's going to give me trues and it's going to give me falses. And I could say, hey, show me places where the year is 2000. And then let's look at the distribution or look at the differences, the different values of whether the prices rose or not. And it's going to say the prices did not rise, 10 cases did rise in two cases. Uh, there could be issues here with, you know, whether uh, uh, the price was the same at the beginning or the end of the month, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but if I'm saying specifically rise versus fall, maybe doing it the way where I explicitly measure like this might be better. Um, but yeah, that's that's just an editorial decision um, on your part. So there we go. Um, we did a little bit of date time conversion here. Where'd that go? Where'd my two date time go? Yeah, so in this case, let me just throw out there that uh, if it did not accurately pull out the date here, you would probably have to do uh, format equals and then start typing a format string in order to describe the way that the date looks. But because, you know, nine times out of 10, honestly, it'll just take a date and convert it into a date time. You don't have to worry about using a format string. It's only if something is kind of weird. So we did a little bit of resampling. Uh, we made a new column called swing. We did a little bit of filtering. And now you know almost everything. <laughs>